In this sec section, we'll be talking about mapping and monitoring changes in coastal ecosystems. My name is Chris Rolsma and I will present this together with Stuart Finn. Um, coastal ecosystems is where a lot of my research is happening. They are beautiful ecosystems and they consist of uh, mangroves, coral reefs uh, and seagrass habitats. These uh, systems um, are important for a nursery ground, biodiversity and coastal protection. As a result, we need to take care of them uh, because they are impact locally, as you probably know from previous uh, lectures. Monitoring and management is therefore important and monitoring and management requires information about these systems. If you take for instance this um, area here on the east coast of um, Australia uh, called the Morton Bay, this is seagrass habitat. And on the west of the image you see the, uh, the coral sea that hits the islands protecting the Morton Bay. The, the swell is breaking on the banks and takes care that in the area behind it, it's a good area for seagrasses to grow. And you'll find in these areas various types of seagrasses uh, growing. Not only in this area you see, see it, but throughout the Morton Bay you can find seagrass. Uh, the Morton Bay is about 1500 square kilometers and 200 square kilometers of it uh, contains seagrass uh, habitat. And these seagrasses vary in, in size and forms, and there's six main species. You have over, overlooking ones, and you have um, strap-like looking ones. To have uh, gain knowledge about where the seagrass is, um, we use remote sensing, but that requires field data as well. So that's why we go in the field and collect throughout uh, Morton Bay uh, information. This is done snorkeling or diving, or using cameras that are lowered on the side of the boats or robots. They generally take photos and these photos can be analyzed for instance for percentage cover or for species composition. That information is then used uh, together with Landsat imagery which have pixel size of 30 by 30 meters um, to or manually delineate or using pixel based approaches to create maps out of it. Which provide us with core scale maps uh, of the percentage seagrass cover. Recently there are now also new methods where you can use higher resolution images with 2 by 2 meter pixel size and automated object based approaches where you can not only get seagrass cover but also seagrass species composition on the left and then seagrass cover in the middle and biomass can be derived from it as well. And on the bottom you see the detail that it provides over a short small area. Now we talked about seagrass environments but in the same way we are looking at coral reef environments also. And an area where we do a lot of research is in the Capricorn Bunker Group, which is part of the Southern ba Great Barrier Reef, and more specifically on Heron Island. Heron Island is a coral reef island and has beautiful corals on it, and it also uh, is an area where we've been done work for the last 12 years. If you look at coral reef systems, then these systems you can look at different uh, reef feature level and each feature level uh, contains a different feature size and scale. The first one that you see is the top one is the reef system and you see here several coral reefs making up the reef system. Each of these reefs is characterized as different and can be considered a fringing reef, or a lagoon reef or a barrier reef. Within each um, reef type, you can look at different zonations. You can look at the reef slope, the reef crest, the reef flat and the lagoon. And each of these is again built up of different community communities. That could be a combination for instance of sand and rubble and algae or the other two uh, on the photos. The last one is then the biotope or patch, which basically describes the highest level of detail. All these levels of detail can be mapped uh, to a certain extent. So here you see the geomorphic maps and the reef type map, and here you see the benthic community map, and then the biotope map. Here you see um, the examples, zoomed in examples of the different maps I just previously showed. On the left you see the satellite image, a pen sharpened image with the deep channel, the dark blue channel, with the boats in the middle and the island of Heron. The next image is the geomorphic map that resulted from that, followed by the benthic map, and then on the left, on the right, is the patch uh, scale map. 
Each of these maps provide valuable information, but at different spatial scales and detail. This kind of information can be used to uh, help management and researchers. And examples of that follow now. So for instance, we did work in Fiji where we looked at predicting fish biomass, or we looked at uh, Solomon Islands for assessing uh, impacts of sea level rise. So to determine the marine protected area, there's a need for knowledge about uh, the composition of the reef, but there's also a need to knowledge about uh, where fish is and how much fish there is. So in this project, we basically used uh, fish field data in combination with the habitat maps and uh, water depth maps, which are both derived from satellite imagery, and a predictive model to create biomass maps of fish. Um, so these maps provide you a high level of detail of to see where there is expectation to be high level, uh, high, high biomass of fish present. And that can be used as input for further marine park planning. Another project we worked on is looking at the assessment of the effects of climate change in the Solomon Islands. The local uh, villages are starting to get inundated and as a result um, they start to get worried where they should be living and where they should go. In the same way they start to go fishing and see that uh, maybe there's changes in their environment and they don't get the amount of fish they usually get, uh, which would, they would like to get. Now the challenge is there is generally not a baseline. So this project basically took care that was a good baseline in where the habitat was. So at all the different scales previously explained um, in this section. Um, as a result of these maps, there's a better understanding what is where and which area need to be protected or need to be considered uh, when uh, looking at the changes of climate change. Summarizing this section, um, we now um, show examples of uh, how we can um, better understand and manage the ecosystems. To get information out of these ecosystems in regards to biophysical pro properties in time and space. And we also show that remote sensing is a, a valuable tool and can be used to get that information so that we can not only uh, look at beautiful pictures, but we can actually get and measure what's there, uh, how it's, what's mapped and how we can monitor it in future.